I don't know if anybody's actually here yet. So. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't quite look like anybody's made it over quite yet, but uh, we'll give it just a moment here. I was telling John that we'd wait. I was going to start just a little early so we don't have any any lag there. And he's just about done. Well, perfect. I guess uh, we could explain why I'm on here while we're waiting for it to, to end. So, so you guys can jump into it when everybody comes over. But I'm here today as Ham Radio Dude or Sean, W9FFF, to take notes. Anybody who has questions in the chat could always feel free there to uh, go ahead and leave your questions. And if Chuck doesn't get to them, I'll be copying them down and I'll repeat them to them later. So yeah, uh, thanks for having me on, Chuck. Oh, thanks for being here. It looks like we're just about done. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into ours. Oh, we're live. Yeah, we're live. Okay, hi everybody. We're going to wait a little while um, before we start here just to let people uh, cross over from Hayden's video. Hey, Hayden had a great video tonight. I had to mute myself so I could uh, not hear myself talk there, so... So we're, we're doing pretty good here. We're getting people in the chat. So that's good. Okay, let's go ahead and start. So, hey, welcome everybody. Uh, this is, I'm Chuck, uh, KK6USY for Ham Radio Ventures. And today we have John Kruk with us from uh, Yesu. And also Sean, Ham, uh, most of you guys know him as Ham Radio Dude, W9FFF. And uh, John is uh, N9 UPC. And John, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell the viewers here what your job is at uh, Yesu there? Well, thanks, Chuck, for having me on. Um, so my, I, I, I guess I guess I guess the best way to describe it is I have um, my title and then what I actually do. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, other as you know, like on job descriptions, they say other jobs as assigned. So my official title is National Sales Manager for Yesu USA. But really, uh, what I do is um, kind of sort of, you know, work as a product specialist, you know, assist the customers where we can uh, do a lot of the education, uh, you know, which with that comes promotions. But uh, really, since the whole COVID-19 thing has kind of started, my role is kind of taken on a different thing. Uh, used to be able to do a lot of, you know, traveling, uh, doing ham fest, doing shows, all that kind of stuff. And of course that ended with, you know, yeah. the COVID-19 thing for now. Well, we'll get back there someday. I truly do believe that. But for right now, what I've started to do is, you know, obviously working remotely, working from home. Um, I'm actually based in Wisconsin. So I'm a true nine lander, as I say. And really uh, most of my day is we're either doing presentations from time to time, I guess you can kind of say, but then uh, working with a lot of customers, uh, working with, you know, whether it might be a technical thing, those kind of things that if they can't get a hold of technical support or tech support's been really busy, we'll jump in, kind of help from there and, and guide the way. Oh, great. So um, last year, your, your guys' big news was the uh, the FTM 350, right? Or is it 300? 300, the FTM 300, yes. yep. I knew as soon as I said that I had it written down wrong. <laughs> How, how's, that, how's that radio been doing for you guys? I mean, has it uh, been received well? You, it has. Um, a lot of people are finding out that that is a, a better solution or better option than, um, let's say, the FTM 400. Or some people are even saying it's 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 nice to have an upgrade um, from the FTM 100. Now, the reason that it's an upgrade from the FTM 100, but we're not at the same 400 level, it's kind of in its own its own track, if you if you if if you say. Um, and the reason being is is because. When we have a radio out, we do listen to what customers give us for feedback, and we always get tons of feedback. Of course, you know, sometimes we have feedback of like someone saying, you know, one person we had right one time saying, you know, like on the FTDX 5000, you should be able to have an extra outlet. So if I wanted to plug in like a coffee pot or something, we're like, no, you know, it's like, you know, panini press. No, okay, we can't, we can't do those things, but we can do some other things, and that helps us kind of look at where radios are going or where we want to design radios and the 300 came up with that concept of people saying i like the 400 with the touch screen and the bigger head that's removable but then people are saying well i don't 
necessarily like that. I want a head that can attach to the body. Right. So while there are a couple compromises, the, the 300 does that. Um, you can attach it to the body. You can, you know, obviously have it a remote mount. But there was other features that as we start to continue down with the progress of Fusion, the success of Fusion, and what people are looking for in the radio, we do try to install those or in, include those into the radios. Now, we obviously, we can't do all of it. And a lot of it is either um, design purposes or practicalities or certain things of firmware and, you know, software components on there. You know, everybody always says, you know, hey, I'm, I, I could you could do this by just a software or firmware change. It's true or not. But right. the 300 really is kind of fitting that that per se niche uh, in and it's and it's unique in a way because more and more people that I've been talking about have not been replacing the 100s, not been replacing the 400s, but have really started to add this as a supplement to their their radio, to their to their environment. And more so, and this is where I kind of come from, is is the MCOM guys, the Aries Races guys, you know, on there. And I say that because the head is small enough that people are using this in their go boxes. And it's just the functionality it can, you know, record, for an example, you pop in the SD card, which is in the control head now, and they're yeah. recording conversations. Um, I actually have a friend here, northern Wisconsin, well, technically northeast Wisconsin. He's very big into the weather spotting. He does a lot of the net controls and everything. And he said, you know what, I got the 300 for other things. But then when I found out I can record conversations and the SD cards right there, he's like, I love it. I now when I'm doing that control it's recording it all for me so then I can actually go back later and listen if we, you know, need to say, hey, wait, wait, they said there was a tornado there. Let me listen to the net. He's not having an external recorder, just as one example there. Yeah, you know, I've I've done that on, on my POTUS and SOTA videos where I I put I punch the person's name in and it doesn't come up and I go back to my videos and it's it's on tape. So, you know, or not on tape. It's not Memorex, I guess. Um, you know, an imp a cool thing I, I liked about that radio was the uh, the bracket. I mean, because it had the quick release bracket, right? Yeah. I don't know why yep. more. I don't know why more radios don't have that because it's. Well, it might be counterproductive for you guys because I might move from vehicle to vehicle instead of buying two radios. But I mean, it's it's an awesome setup. I mean, well, you know, in my car, and that was one of the things that I said too when I started. You know, with Yezu, I had at the time I had a 2009 Dodge Charger. And with the batteries like in the trunk, and I, I was really kind of an issue there. And when I mounted the bracket underneath the seat, I'd have to like raise the seat up and then like move the seat forward and then come in from the back door and then mount it there and then screw in the radio and stuff there. But then what I'm able to do now is with that, once again, it's quick slide in lock release. If I need to take the radio off or something, boom, it's, it's, yeah, it's, well, it's great. And taking it out for just not getting stolen, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. Unfortunately. Too. Yeah, 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 it's 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 kind of nuts that you have to do that sometimes, but it's it's yeah, it takes it out and then, and then one of the other things a lot of people say is is that it's a bigger, flatter cable, and that's what we had said all along. You know, people are saying, well, why can't you do this with the four hundred to one hundred? Why can't you put the SD card and stuff like that in there? It was like we didn't have a cable long enough. Well, guess what? Now we're at the point of technology where we're using basically almost like an Ethernet cable. You know, they're an RJ forty five or excuse me, Cat five cable kind of deal. And you, there, you're good to go. You know, you don't, you don't have to. You can put more data through it and give bigger extensions. That's awesome. Yeah. So I know there's going to be some questions I might ask you, and you may or may not be able to answer, but you might mm -hmm. give us some kind of a hint. I know you guys have. Uh, Yesu has uh, discontinued like the 857, the 1200, the 3000, and I, for the 857 for sure. I mean, um, do you guys have some kind of like? SDR type radio coming out to, to replace that, or is that anything that they're looking at, or over it too much of a niche for uh, for that? You know, not not really. Um, of course, yeah, I am I'm bound by you know certain abilities to disclose information and not uh, mm -hmm. there. But I will tell you this: there's a lot of research and development going on right now. One of the things that has Im impacted some of our radios to be taken out of production has been um, not the chip. Um, shortage like AKM. A lot of people are saying, oh, you got hit by AKM. Well, actually, right. we did not. Believe it or not, we were lucky enough that we had things set up. But what happened was is that, unfortunately, we saw a lot of people with components that saw saw a, a opportunity to, you know, oh, you know, this company makes component A100, but then, you know, as time went on and this whole COVID thing kind of started, they saw abilities to say, well, you know what? A100 is no longer production, but we just came out with B200 and that chip 
is going to replace the A100. It does the same thing as the A100, but replacing it, but we're going to charge more because it's a new chip. So those kind of things come into factors when we have the ability to do components. Now, getting to the question of product release, we do have things that we are currently testing. Um, I, I can't really go more into that, but I can tell you this, that our testing process is very rigid. And what I mean by rigid is, is that even for me as being on the inside, being at the level that I'm up at, it's very controlled and it's very, how do I say, I don't want to say secretive, but it's very, it's very controlled in the nature of what is being done, what is being released in for information. And I, and I kind of respect that. And I like that. I'm not saying as a company man, but believe it or not, I'd rather go ahead and know the final outcome instead of rumors or misinformation or stuff being, you know, set out there. That's this and this and this, I can't, I can't begin to tell you how many pictures I received in my email of what the new 818 was going to look like. And, oh, and I, I have some of those too, I, I think. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> Where, and then also, to add, as a matter of fact, one person said one time, well, I got that picture directly from John Crook. And I was like on the message board. I'm like, um, hi, no, you didn't. Um, might want to <laughs> check your story. But but right. we, we do we do have some things. But one of our biggest things that we've tried to do, especially on the HF side, is, is we do have high quality and we do strive to do high quality. And when we put our time and effort into a design of the rig, we try to make sure that it's going to fulfill the needs that we have seen or have been reported to us. All righty. And you could see that in our, you know, rigs, especially I'm going to give you an example is the 897 and a 991 as, as kind of just points there. There was no sense in coming up with a, uh, with a, a quick replacement to the 897. We wanted something better. Now this of course was before my time, but I was able to like do the research on it. That's why the 991 came out with a touch screen. It came out with these functions. It came out with an SD card built into it. You know, our 891, if you take a look at that compared to like the 857, for an example, the purpose we came out for there is a lot of people are saying, I don't necessarily want to do or pay extra for single sideband or centimeters, centimeters sideband, but I want increased ability in certain things. I want a better TXCO. I want a better this. I want a better this, you know, to increase as, you know, obviously time and technology went on because right. you were looking between the two. Those were like 15 years. So that's why a lot of R&D goes into the stuff on there. And um, I can tell you that we will test and test and test and continue to test and release things to the market as fast as we can, but to ensure that it's going to fit the bill for sake of a better term. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I told you, I was telling John earlier that uh, A57 is one of my favorite radios for taking portable. If I'm going to, if I want to hike something up a hill or something that's a hundred <laughs> Watts and uh, you know, I, I I, I like it because it does have two meter and seventy centimeter on it, and I and I, I'm a I'm a SSB guy, so for for two meter, and I love doing that, and so so the um is the I'm not going to get to the FTX ten right yet, but I, I want to ask is is that a replacement for the three thousand? Is that what Yesu's looking at? I kind of think it is, but it's not. It, it's not really. Um... This comes back to a concept that we we kind of started to do and kind of look at starting all the way actually back, let's call it the, you know, let's say the early 90s with the FTDX, uh, um, FT2000 at the time it was called, and the FT950. So let me, let me give you kind of a little bit of quick history on that. So the FT2000, the FTDX5000, and the FTDX101. They were kind of like flagship models at the time. They were, you know, high performance receivers, dual receivers, a lot of, lot of capabilities, a lot of high end, high tier stuff that, you know, we wanted the contesters, the hard HFers to be able to use, to do, you know, and obviously that comes with a little bit of a price, you know, obviously, uh, because what you're putting into the radio, the, the rig for performance, for electronics, all those kind of things like that on there. But what happened was the FTD, FT2000, a lot of people said, I couldn't, I can't afford it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a weekend HFer. I'm the Aries Racies net, the weekly net HFer. I'm not some guy who's going to sit down, you know, as I put it, like myself, my kind of category, you know, I'll spin the dial on a contest, but, you know, I'll sit and call or maybe I'll hunt and peck. But if, if I get 100 contacts on a contest, wow, I did a lot. So that's where the 950 came in for the 2000. That's where the 3000 came in for the 5000 and that's where the ftdx 10 comes in with the ftdx 101 
Okay. They're of the same high quality performance. They have good receivers, the same capabilities on there. But what it is, it's it's more how do you want to say narrowed down or filtered down, which allows people to get into a good high quality HF radio, but they're not paying the high quality HF radio price. So right. like like the nine fifty and the, like the example of the three thousand, three thousand and five thousand. The difference between the three thousand and five thousand at a, at the ten thousand foot view was it only had one receiver. OK, but mm-hmm. it still used the same nine megahertz down conversion receiver that was built into the FTDX 5000. So right. you have some of those kind of pulled away from it. So the 10 wasn't necessarily to replace the 3000. The 10 was to saying, hey, the people who want high quality SDR and you, you but you don't want to pay the 101 price, you d- can't afford a 101. Here's what you can do with the 10. And this is going to really foot the bill and allow you to experience some of those things. OK. Um, actually, I'm going to go to Sean now. Sean, do we have any questions uh, that you could ask, John? Uh, yes, actually, there's a couple of questions, and some of them are maybe basic for you. But uh, John wanted to know, what antenna do I use for GPS on the 991A? You know, there are a couple different ones out there. Um, I have, uh, personally, I've used, oh, I can't think of now. Shoot, I... I don't even have the box right in front of me here, but um, there is one out on the market that was a DB9 connector on there. And I'm trying to remember the APRS kit that came with it uh, or uh, that it came for. Um, it was a little APRS kit, Digi, it's not DigiKey. Something was a little APRS, but it had a nine pin um, uh, serial kind of connector on there. And that kind of did a plug and play. Um, otherwise, there are some USB connectors that are out there or gps antennas that are out there where you may have to get like a what, what do they call them a um U- o- usb to go or something like that where it kind of does that kind of split thing and then one would have to go to power for the antenna and the other would have to go to like a serial adapter but there are a couple different ones out there uh for that but if you can't find a GPS antenna that works or like me, you're in the basement um, of your house where you may not get GPS signal, you always can manually put in the GPS data into the 991. That's very convenient too, yeah. Uh, a couple more questions uh, that, that had come in was uh, Cole Carl Miss uh, says, does Yesu still have a special on repeaters for clubs? Yes, we do. Um, if you go to our website, um, System Fusion dot com. once again, that's one word, System Fusion dot yezu.com uh we do have the repeater special it's running through june 30th and we actually have specials on the dr2x and then we also have uh specials on the dr1 xfr the dr1 xfr is the factory refurbished model of the dr1 x um both of our repeaters just as a matter of fact like all of our radios that you buy brand new uh from the dealer or the repeaters you buy directly from us at the discounted rate come with the three-year warranty on there even the factory refurbished units so um yep that's still going until june on the dr2x the dr1x fr is while supplies last and we're getting down there awesome i'll keep going if chuck wants me to but there's a couple more questions um i'm gonna paraphrase this one <laughs> but uh could you explain the iambic why uh, found on the 991A. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, um, I'd actually have to take a look at that one up on there because um, I have been asked that one time before, so I do apologize. Um, I've been working on another video, so I've been deep down in the menus of the other videos on there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a suggestion. Contact our technical support department on there because I know they they work with uh, a lot of the HF stuff on there, and I do apologize on there um, I'm not having the good example because I wanted to make a reference to it in the manual on there and kind of explain a little more, more in depth, probably even more so than here. But I would say contact the technical support on there, and then that way they will be able to help you more on a one-on-one kind of situation to explain it. But I have heard that question come up before. Thank you. Perfect. Um... And then let's see here. There's, uh, I, you can't answer the question. You've already kind of disclosed the information. Like you can't really talk about products that might be in the works. So I'm going to skip a couple of these here. But uh, one of them says, what is the actual difference between the DR and the DE versions of the FT3 apart from the countries it's sold into? That's that's really basically what it is. It's just the countries that it's sold in. The DR, so the D stands obviously for a digital, but the R stands for the North America version usually or the band split of like 144 to 148 
and 430 to 450. That's usually the North America version and other countries in the world um, that may have that open band there. The DE version is usually restricted to like 144 to 146. And then depending, it could either be 430 to 440 or 440 to 450. So that's really the only difference between the two is just the frequency coverage on there. And that usually relates to because of like what we have to do for part 97 type acceptance in the United States versus other countries that have, you know, restrictions on the radios and those kind of things there. I, I, I actually, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Cause I've been wondering the same thing. I I've got a, the two, the FTD three, and I, I've always wondered what, you know, some say DR, some say DE, you know, all that stuff. I, I didn't, I didn't know what the real answer for that was. Yeah. Um, do you have another question there? Uh, Dude, or if I can go yeah, on with uh, it. one more came in here uh, from Bugaboo, and he says, and this will be probably your personal opinion, John, and it's going to probably mm -hmm. vary on quite a few things, but uh, what is the best Yezu HT for a new ham? And I oh, know that's a loaded that's question. <laughs> that's loaded. <laughs> um, uh, all of them. I yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the boss watching. Uh, no, you know, and, and this is this is actually a good question. And we actually, actually, I just answered that today. Um, someone said, what is a good starter ht for me and i and i always reply back and i i always hate to answer a question with the question but i always start back and i saying what are you using it for and the reason i say that is is because i've had people that said well i'm going to be doing you know fm only and i'm not going to be doing fusion or digital or anything like that i want it as a go bag ht those kind of things then i'm going to tell you uh, you look at the ft4 the ft65 those are going to be more of an entry level fm only kind of somewhat, you know, Aries, Racy's, MCOM geared. But then if you want a digital radio or something like that on there, then you're going to be looking at the FT70 as an entry level. If you want a standard, hey, um, I want something that has a battery pack that's been tried and true that people love and everything like that, then I'll tell you the FT60. So it, it really kind of depends on what the the usage is. I, I love think that's my, I love my 60, man. Yeah, I that, think that's a great explanation, too, about how it all breaks down. Um, do you mind if I ask one question about the 65 and the 4? Sure. Sure. Uh, they, they were made in China for a while. And recently I've seen photos emerging on the Internet and photos. I don't know if they're true or not, but a lot of them are now saying made in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. can, you, can you comment on that they are actually made in Japan now or China it it really and and this is this is a good one too because this gets brought up on there too. We don't so you know by by law, which a lot of people don't realize, as a manufacturer, where the last screw is literally screwed into the case is where we have to post the sticker on there saying it was assembled here. Now all of our parts come through Japan on a quality control kind of aspect. Then they're distributed out to the different manufacturing locations. And then they're all assembled wherever those factories might be. And then they come back through Japan on there. So it's not going to be uncommon that people may see a radio may one time be built in China and then it may be built in um, Japan or stuff like that on there. It's really kind of based on where we have production of the radio and what's going on and how we need to move and, and do kind of things on there. Um, so I know a lot of people are like, you know, oh, I don't want a Chinese made radio. And I'm like, but it's not a Chinese made radio. Well, it's made in China. Well, well, the final screw is put in place in China, but it's we're we're a Japanese company. It all comes back through us in Japan. So really, that thing on the box is more or less a we're required to by the government disclosure kind of thing on there. But it it can vary, and um, different makes, different models um, will do that. I mean, probably through the history of our radio manufacturing and and i do i actually have one of the first ftm 100 boxes well when they first came out i got one but on the box it it, it says made in japan and there were a time where some of them were made in china and then they're made in japan again so once again it all depends on what was at the factory line at that time excellent I, that that's a great quite or a great great answer there i appreciate that thank you yeah so the smoke and ape asked uh, any chances of a of an oem lithium battery for the ft60s it, it, probably not. Um, and the reason being is, is because of how the FT60 is designed. So what's interesting about it is, is a couple things on there. So since the FT60 has been in such production for a long time, we're bound by certain laws that have been impacting us for energy cons conservation, stuff like that for California. 
So for an example, that's why originally, if you have an original almost FT60 or up to, let's say five, six years ago, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you used to be able to charge it without the desktop charger. Now you have to have the desktop charger. And the reason being is because you have to have energy conservation. But in addition to it, the reason it's NICAD is because that still with the alkaline battery pack will allow you to run five watts where some of our other radios that have like, I'll give you an example, the FT3 that has an alkaline battery pack. You put the alkaline battery pack on there. Boom, you're down half wattage. Now that does once again, kind of come into design and the firmware and stuff like that of the radio. So going to lithium ion, of course, they're going to respond differently charging and a performance wise than NICAD will, which will then of course with a um, regular like nickel metal hydride battery on there. So probably you're not going to see that um, on there. I'm going to say anytime soon, but maybe never um, just because of those factors influenced on there. If you notice there are more current radios, yes, they have that, but that's because the way that the radio is able to be designed and manufactured and more, you know, obviously technology components, that kind of thing like that. For yeah, there. Especially battery technologies, like just really getting a lot better all the time. Oh, big time, big time. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to my, and this is probably something you can't answer, but uh, uh, when, when the 818 came out, I was a little, I have to tell you, I'm, I like Asus. I like all radios actually, but um, I was really disappointed. Uh, it, the, the upgrades to that really weren't a lot. And, and that, how long's that radio been around? Quite a 15 well, the, years. The 817 came out because it was a trifecta series. It was with the 897, the 857, and the 817. That came out with okay. the concept of 897 at home, 857 in your car. I'm out hiking up you know, hiking up the, the mountain snow covered as, as all the brochures always showed and, and using that radio there. So it was kind of part of that whole tri series. So uh, right now, um, in ham radio that the portable radios, the QRP radios and stuff like that, that's, that's one of the hottest things out right now. I, it, would not something that I would say for a new ham to get, but, uh, is there, do you, I know you can't really tell me, but I'm going to ask anyhow, is there any, anything in the works maybe to, bring out something to replace that radio we we do have things in the works um like i said uh the research and development thing i will say it's it's going to be an interesting year whether we see them actually come to fruition in this year um mm -hmm. or we're going to see it at the start of next year um because while things are returning to normal not everything's back to normal yet supply shipping all those kind of things like that that uh, unfortunately impact us uh you're 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 going to start to see some things that are going to come out and with them coming out, it's it's going to be as the way I can describe and the way I kind of feel it's going to be like, oh, really? OK, that makes sense. OK, cool. I like that. Those kind of things like that on there. And um, nice. And and the touch on the 818. Um, so here's where we came with that. Um, the 817, a lot of people like mm -hmm. and you have two main groups of people, believe it or not, that hands down always come to me and always are like. We love the 817. Glad you continued with it. You know, you call it the 818 now and that. But it's it's the QRPers, the, the you know, the walk. I call it the QRP walkers. You know what I mean? That They got the small mm -hmm. radio. They'll go walking, those kind of things like that on there. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like it's not meant to be derogatory. It's just that, hey, I like QRP. I want to literally walk up the mountain or walk on, you know, summits on the air, parks on the air, that kind of thing. And then the other really large user of the 81718 series Oh, is say. <laughs> satellites yep satellites the satellites and and believe it or not now that's kind of like starting to kind of come almost into third category now believe it or not are the microwavers like they're they're getting transverters and using the 818s and stuff like that to mm -hmm. to do the, the the microwave stuff and with the 818 it, it came down to this the once again a component thing where the 817s transmit oscillator the txco was where we were being told, okay, it's going to be coming to an end. And we don't we don't run a radio out to the end and saying, okay, we're done, fine. We want to make sure right. we can support it for a while. So right. so what happened was we put the new TXCO in. It gave us more stability. Now we're down to 0 0.5 ppm on there, okay? But then we found out, okay, guess what? We're getting one more watt out of there. Well, why not let the users have one more watt if they want to? Great, fine. Guess what? Better TXCO, one more watt of power. Now I'm going to need more power to run it. So we had to upgrade the battery. Well, guess what? FCC. Haha, -ha, it's not an 817 anymore. You've changed it enough uh, that right. you have to get type accepted again. You can't type accept with the same model number. Therefore, that's why we had to come up with the 818. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I'm, I wasn't knocking. I, there's a lot of. I know there's a, a huge following on that radio still. Um, yeah, and and when you brought up, I, I knew exactly what you're going to say about satellites because I, I just I just read something on that, and that's it's super popular for that because like guys are run like two of them, right? Yeah, they're they're doing. So Some I had a chance at. Yeah, at AMSAT, it was the AMSAT booth was right across from us at um, Hamcation 2019. It was, yeah, because 2020 we had it, then everything went uh, shut down. So it's 2019. And I went over to talk to him, and he says, Yeah, they're so small. The, the profile is so small. They don't draw a lot of power. So you can actually do one almost like power source for both radios. And and they were just kind of showing me this whole thing. And they said, It's just absolutely amazing um, on there what you can do. And and just to be able to use it for satellites without an issue. I, I I like that shape of the radios, really. I like the A57 in that shape. And, and I, I was amazed when I finally saw an 817 or 818 in person how, how small that radio really is. Um, it's kind of still long, but uh, really thin. Um, all right. So uh, your guys' big news this year was the FTD X10. Mm -hmm. And so I've got... I, I'm going to ask you a question first. Can you can you tell us the reasons that Yesu did what they did on that radio instead of going full SDR? They went to a hybrid system, I mean, and then I'll let you just kind of go off from there. Yeah. So this is one of those things where um, it's subjective and objective. I call it kind of like a left twix, right twix kind of thing. Here's what we did when we went into SDR. We we hands down we said the best, and I've said it numerous times. The best quality of an SDR is it's also its worst quality of an SDR, and that is it receives well. All righty, mm -hmm. and if you and that's why people want to do SDR, it receives so well. But the issue obviously is is that when you have it set up in a receiver, you know, and we can do testing in any any SDR receiver, just like you know an FRS radio can go forty eight miles in a bench, you know, test setting. You know, SDR right. receivers perform great in a bench controlled test environment. It's when you start to imp in, you know impact those real world elements, those actual hey, I'm using in this situation. And what we started to find out with an SDR is is that many people who want it want to be able to pull the signal up out of the mud, but you don't you don't you know if you're and and I and I guess the one I just used on a presentation with the club was I said you know it, it's raining a lot here in Wisconsin okay and if you like to collect rocks or agates or something like that and you're right by the edge of the beach where it's mud and sand are you going to go ahead and scoop up the whole beach to be able to just find the one rock no you're going to go ahead and kind of work hard to be able to see where that rock is at you're going to just get that rock. So what we did is we said, why do you have to bring everything into the receiver and then try to pick it out? So once again, scoop up the whole beach, put it into a dump truck just for one small rock. So we did, on the other hand, is we said, let's go ahead and help narrow what's coming in to the receiver. All righty. Now, yes, is that meaning that your signal's coming in? Is it going through the band pass, the notch filters, everything like that, filtering it down? Yes, it is. But by the time you're getting it to the SDR receiver, the FPGA, you are hitting it with a with yes, a narrowed signal, but it still is truly going into an SDR receiver. So we're just basically saying, why not narrow what you are seeing or giving to the receiver? It doesn't have to drink everything. You know, drink from the fire hose just for a glass of water is another example that I used. Now, with that, we've noticed that we have a better time applying algorithms to it. We have a better time of basically getting a pure signal in to the FPGA or, or the, the actual receiver itself, the SDR receiver for layman's terms. And then what that allows us to do is it really allows us to, you know, break down into at, and I kind of say as we're, we went from that 10,000 foot view all the way down to like a one foot view. And now with that, we could say, hey, let the receiver do its true job instead of being overloaded from not just, you know, adjacent co-channels co and stuff like that. But even on the edges of your frequency, you know, if something's close to you, that SDR receiver will hear it because it's good, you know, and that's yeah. and that's why we did it. And that's that's how we achieved actually being able to pull it out. Now, the interesting aspect of the FTDX 10, which this plays into is if you have a 101 or you know about the 101, we added a VC tune, so variable crystal tuner on there, okay? If we were going to go ahead and, and try to associate it with something people know, they may know it as the micro tunes on like the, far, uh, the 3000 to 5000 series on there. 
But what we did is, is on that, we, we don't have a VC tune in the FTDX 10. But what we did is, is you'll notice that the contour and the notch filtering are really, really, really strong in this radio. And that's what's pulling it out of the mud, that signal out of the mud where you're having a hard time hearing it and boom, it's right there. Yeah. Now, once again, that's where it comes in as subjective objective. Oh, you're, you're going ahead and, and you're, you're hybrid. Yeah. If you take a look at other companies designs, they're putting the filtering behind the FPGA. And really, I guess that's where it comes into question is, is, is it, is it wrong to put it behind or is it right to put it in front? And depending on what you're trying to accomplish with the receiver, that's going to come down and saying, hey, here's where the design comes into play. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, it's it, that's a that's a beautiful radio. I mean, that's the first radio that's come out because of the price range. That's something that I'm I thought about replacing my three thousand, but I just I can't I can't sell my three thousand. It's just <laughs> too good of a radio. And and, and I was I, I would say the the thing that I would would miss on that is the extra antenna ports because yeah. I, I use mine so yep. and, and that's and, and that's had that's them, a big thing that's a big thing that some have said when you've had those it's like uh, I, yeah i could do it other ways but i'd like just pushing the button on my radio and that's what i like about the 3000 i just it has a lot of buttons yeah there's some you know a lot of people don't like the the menus and stuff but once you have like the, the audio for the for the Yesus that I have, I have uh, well, I had I had an eight ninety one that I was borrowing for a while. My nine ninety one and my three thousand. If I'm using the stock hand mic, they mm -hmm. all have the exact exact same settings. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of friends. In fact, you're talking about the two thousand. I got a couple of friends down in uh, San Diego that love that radio. In fact, my buddy bought one and he's looking for a second one because they're getting hard to find and they're they're not cheap either. No, no, they're, it's a, it's a big market on there. Yeah, so. But, Go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to say one other thing that we did with the the ten now that because you mentioned about antenna ports is is we we looked at an aspect and we pulled this kind of out of you want to say the the feedback we got on the nine ninety one and what we wanted to do and we found to do is is that people obviously the one one if you if you if you have or seen a one one if you have a one one you're going to understand what I'm talking about and this thing is huge okay a lot of real mm -hmm. estate that takes up on your bench almost the size of the FTDX 5000 the biggest difference is the FTDX 5000 was so large cuz it had its own power supply where the 101 it doesn't have its own power supply cuz that's a lot of processing power underneath there but one of the things that a lot of people said and we have a lot of people that do with the 991 and with the 450 when that was still in production is, is they like to take it portable transportable. They like to take it mobile. Um, I just actually had a customer to ask me and says, John, what is the mounting bracket for the FTDX 10? Is it the same as the FT 991 a? And I said, yes, yes, it is. The mounting bracket is. is saying, yeah, it is. I believe it's an MB 40 or 50 off the top of my head right now. But um, the FTDX 10 is very similar in real estate to the 991. With that being said, in order to have it as a transportable thing, we did a few things in there that are going to allow you to use it at home as a base rig. But then if you're going out on field day, if you're doing my jokingly new thing, DOTA, which is driveways on the air, mm -hmm. <laughs> where I go out and use my ATAS 120, um, but, but it's only got the one antenna port on there. So it's designed to kind of go in that mobile fashion on there. So that's where it was kind of like, do we add more antenna ports or do we make sure it has features that can be used with that. It can be used with the ATAS 120 that can be used um, in, in a mobile environment if, if you wanted to. Yeah. That's another one of my radios. And I, I love taking it to uh, parks on the air and stuff like that. And is a 990. I have a 991 a also. And I've, I've been looking at, I've got the, I've got the mounting bracket for it and I bought that for my trailer, but, it looks like it's going to fit in my Dodge pickup and I, it just might go in there because the screen's big enough and you can see it. And it's just, it's just such a nice radio. I really like the radio and I like the options of the two. I can take my two meter out or I could keep it in there. I've got a, I've got an 8,800, mm -hmm. which I wish you guys never quit making that radio, but I know how it is. But, <laughs> um, there was another radio that, that was like, it was a 300 or a 350. Did you guys make a 350? Was it only, it was, it was like, 
a wider and it had a huge screen on it. I don't know how, yep. when you guys yep. made those. That was the FT. It was an FTM or FT three fifty. It was the, the number itself was three fifty. I can't remember. I think it was the FTM three fifty. And yes, that was a dual band, so VHF and UHF. And then it gave about a watt, watt and a half on two twenty for the US version oh, on okay. there. So so we did make that, and then that was oh, that's going back a good ten years at least now, um, like twenty twelve kind of. Okay, around there. I, I just saw some picture of the that's a pretty cool looking radio. Um, before we go on with the the, the ten there, let's uh, did you have some more questions for him? From I sure do. Thanks. Uh, yeah, looks like we have about four more questions since last time. Uh, Old Raven had asked, uh, "What is the lead time currently on an FT nine nine one A?" He's really looking for one of those. You know, the biggest, the best thing I could tell people too is right now is, is that to check with your dealers. Um, and the reason being is, is that we're updating the dealers uh, directly because I know a lot of the dealers are starting to get in, um, you know, pre-orders and stuff like that. Um, we, contrary to popular belief, uh, no, it's not out of production because that was a rumor going around. Uh, we know a lot of shipping things got delayed, um, stuff we didn't have control over. As a matter of fact, there was a big story a couple months ago. And a friend of mine took pictures, the Long Beach Harbor. Um, they had like hundreds of ships like out there just not getting to the dock. So that has increased some uh, difficulty with just shipping delays on there. We are updating the dealers because I know dealers are taking it on there. I don't want to give you a time and saying, okay, hey, we're shipping, you know, this out to dealers next week. And then next thing you know is you're like number 20 on the list. And we only sent them 15 for an example. Yeah, so. And, and and then all of a sudden it's like, well, John Kruk told me. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I so totally check right. that. Check with yeah. your dealer and they're and they're updated a lot. And then they are working through back orders as fast as they can and they are notifying customers quickly on there. Awesome. Thank you. Uh next question comes from Liberty Cave and he says, uh, I'm looking for a nice mobile that starts with two meter and goes down to at least ten meters, but fifteen meters and even twenty meters would be okay with single sideband. Uh is such a horse available in the Yezu staple? not as a true mobile one right now the 857 would have been uh the niche for there uh the 891 goes up to six meters that's as high as it's going to go it does not include uh two meters so right now as of today you have two options you can go with the 991 which would give you 100 watts 50 watts that kind of thing like that so 50 watts on two 100 watts on um hf bands or you could go with the 818 which is going to give you six watts across everything on there. That's, you know, once again, the QRP, but hey, it does actually work in the mobile. Yeah. It's um, super small. I mean, for fitting in a car or something. Yeah, right. Uh, Ken, Kay Ensman asked, uh, is there a newer antenna or replacement or maybe an upgrade to the Addis 120A? Uh, nothing right now. Um, we we always do take a look at it. You know, we brought we brought out the 120, um, the ATAS 25, which is the manual adjusting one, uh, largely based on the fact to kind of fill somewhat of a need at that point in time uh, that people wanted an HF antenna. They wanted it auto tuning. They didn't want a, a tuner involved, those kind of things like that. So while there's not one on the horizon right now, I'm not sure what they're looking at in regards to accessories for the rigs sometimes i just have a hard enough time keeping track on where we're at with other projects with new radios possibly coming out and stuff like that on there so i haven't heard anything about the accessories just yet excellent and there was one more question and it's kind of a hassle joke question but hmm. uh dan said uh, who is the uk european equivalent so us uk hams can has hassle them <laughs> um <laughs> uh you know uh, uh uh i'm trying to think who would be uh <sighs> You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say <laughs> go to go to Yezu.com and in the upper right corner you'll see it will say Yezu UK. Click on Yezu UK, there'll be like the little flag there. That will take you to the Yezu UK web um uh site for Yezu and, and they'll be able to ha help you there. I know there's an equivalent of me. Um interesting, but but it's 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 kind of weird because Yezu USA is, you know, obviously the North America region. Then we have Yezu UK, and then we have Yezu kind of based out of Japan, which kind of takes care of Asia, Oceania, uh, I believe technically part of Australia or all of Australia there. So it's kind of divided into those regions there. And to be honest with you, we're so busy sometimes that, you know, in the U.S. we're... We're, we're busy. Yeah, you know, I, I can't. Yeah. I can't really describe it that more. Sure. I do. I do have contacts over there, but I don't want to say that's the person to go to because guess what? My luck. That's not going to be the right person, and I don't want to make them upset. 
Absolutely. Okay, I, just, I just want to interrupt you for a second. I want to say uh, thanks to Ham Radio Dude for the uh, super chat and the same to Old Raven. Thank you for the super chat. We don't have the music tonight or the uh, dance. No. So sorry, guys. No, no music or dance. <laughs> I said I would be on my best behavior. <laughs> yes. Uh, that is all the questions I have uh, so oh, right now, Chuck. Okay. And as always, guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the chat with the word question in front, and I'll do my best to copy and paste them. Okay. Uh, so you have any more on the – anything new on the, uh, the FTDX10 that's coming out for – you know, I, I know there's been some firmwares and stuff like that. Anything that you know that's coming out? You know, uh, not really. We did just release the firm, uh, firmware update about a week or two ago. Um, what are nice things, if you haven't done the firmware on the FTDX10, it's not really that hard. It's you, you put it in the SD card, and then once you do the firmware, you'll have to restart it with a button press on there. The instructions are in the download, so you download the zip file. Everything's in there, everything you need to go. One of the biggest things I think that um, a lot of people don't realize is, you know, once again, the contour and the notch filtering is just... Once again, absolutely amazing. I've played with myself. I have my own FTDX10 um, right away when it came out. Um, my name went in for the to there, and I said, listen, I want to buy one right away. And they said, well, i um, going to have to wait in line because we, um, contrary to popular belief, we, we, we could buy our own radios. But um, we have to make sure all back orders are filled and everything like that first. So the customers and everything like that get radios first before I can actually even buy my own. And um, when I got mine, I, I just played with it. I played with it. Um, remarkable radio. Uh, the biggest thing I'm going to, I'm going to tell people, and here's what it is. If you are, no, once again, I'm not a, I'm not a HF contester. I do the, I'm net control for the Wisconsin Aries races net a few times, um, uh, you know, through the year, like I said, I'll rag chew and stuff that on there. This radio is by far the most non-intimidating powerful radio I have seen. Um, and here's why I say that the reason being is, is because a it's touchscreen B it has a monitor output. All right. So there's a DVI connection on the back. You can get a cable, get an adapter, go to an HDI, um, HDMI. I have mine connected to the monitor. As a matter of fact, you see the TV over there. I'm redoing. That's why I'm, you know, when I have so much time to finish the drywalling, that's why I got the curtains up because it's a mess right now. But that is actually it, it going to be interfaced um, into into the um, HDMI switch um, for for watching it over there when I'm working on the bench. But the microphone, you have an M1 microphone, you have the M100 microphone, you have the new M70 microphone. The microphones are amazing on these radios um, that come with it standard. But I would tell you, if you want a good desk mic, look into these microphones because they're going to help you out on there. One other thing I'm going to tell you about that we are we have out right now, um, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's it's People wish it had more features, and more features are coming. We are working on things on there. But it is actually using the SCU, well, it's actually the LAN 10 unit is the model number, LAN 10 or SCU 10 LAN unit. What this does is this connects into the FTDX10 and allows you to do remote operation of the FTDX10. Now, it was initially designed for an in-house network, so a LAN network. Um, we do have, it, it can operate on a WAN network, so basically I'm up the cabin up north, my fortress of solitude, and I want to remote back in to do it, then yes, I can go ahead and do that with the SCU10 LAN unit. However, right now, um, you can use a single sideband on it. There's not the aspects of uh, CW. Um, they are working on it and other data modes. Now, the reason being is, is because the factors we can't necessarily control, which is like internet lag, um, you know, jitter, buffer, all those kind of things like that, that if you try to send CW at a very fast rate, not even really a fast rate, but, you know, kind of an average rate, just because of the lag and stuff, it doesn't, it doesn't make CW. It, it makes a long, continuous tone on there when remote wise. I want to stress mm -hmm. that when remote wise on there. But that's really kind of thing that a lot of people are starting to find and really start to enjoy on there because now what they're finding out is they're saying, wait, I don't have to be downstairs. 
I can take my Microsoft as I have a Surface Pro that I use for LAN or for for amateur radio stuff. You know, if I'm in the car or whatever, what wires X or whatever, I can take that. I can go upstairs. So Sunday morning, my wife ain't up, the kids ain't up yet. You know, I'm sitting in the chair, have my coffee. I want to get on HF. I don't have to come downstairs here to the shack. I can actually do that remotely. So that is coming out. And a lot of people are starting to enjoy that and, and play with that on there. So those are kind of some of the big things on 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 the horizon that we have right now. Well, that's pretty much the kind of the way of the future right there. That's a lot of radio is going to start doing that, I'm sure. Yep. That's, that's the one that be, well, since you brought it up, <laughs> um, why is it? And it's not just Yesu, It's all the manufacturers. How come nobody puts HDMIs on their radios? You know, the, I, I can't speak for other manufacturers. I'll tell you why for ours is it because, believe it or not, you know, the HDMI is designed for audio and video. Um, you're going to be pulling your audio out of, you know, with the speaker and everything like that. So there's really not an aspect for having an HDMI there because it's just going to have audio or a video. It's not going to have audio. Um, you can get somewhat of a better resolution on the DVIs because it's just pure um pure video for sake of a better term. And I know people are going to argue with that. They said, no, you can do the same thing with HDMIs, but uh, to be really put it honest with you, it's, it's just kind of been somewhat of a little bit of a standard per se that we've seen on there. And for just video, it just, it just seems to work. It's, it's not a problem on there. I know people will, you know, have a problem. Well, I don't have anything that has a DVI on there. And we said, we, yeah, we know we hear, we, we hear you and stuff like that on there. But on the flip side of the coin is, is that, it's easier for us to interface in the radios. And then secondly, you can get all these adapters all over the place on there. You just got to make sure, believe it or not, that you get the right adapter. Um, I will stress that there's been people that have purchased H. Uh, a, a, it's basically purchased the wrong way. It's a HDMI to a DVI and then it doesn't work. You need right. the DVI to HDMI. I picked my cable up for Best Buy. Um, I think it was like. Okay. 20 bucks, 25 bucks or whatever. And that worked for me. Um, it is a little bit of a lower resolution output on there. You know, you're looking at about, uh, I think it's like an 800, 480 or 800, 600. There is two things set out there, but for just projecting it onto the screen and stuff like that, to have a better set of eyes. And then in addition, my mouse here, it's really nice because, um, I have a mouse that plugs right into the radio there. Um, actually I have it into a, a powered hub, kind of like a little like computer kind of thing. And then that gives me the ability to drivers and stuff like that on there. But then that way I can sit back and I literally will just move my mouse around. I could select frequency, change potter on there and everything. And then I have my, my, my computer right now, I have my M one and then it's just amazing. It's just this whole little tiny package is amazing. Well, that's a lot better answer than the HDMI logo costs a lot of money. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've heard people say that it's like, <laughs> you guys are so behind the times and stuff. And it's like, yeah, no, you got to understand though. You know, we're trying to split it, you know, we're trying mm -hmm. to split it out to the screen and then out another way. And sometimes it's easier to be more granular, which a DVI produces. And can you, can you, uh, you can operate the, uh, radio from like a mouse on a, on a TV screen or a computer screen or is that, yeah. Yep. So you can you you there are some clicks and and stuff on there. So you may have to do a, a minor um, intervention. So for example, the multi-function button. This is where I was getting back. It's not intimidating. We don't have a lot of menus in the FTDX10. It's more of a button. But I can hit the multi-button knob. And let's say I want the multi-function knob to be power output. Well, I hit the multi-function knob. Take my mouse with the mouse pointer. Click on there. That changes it to the multi-function knob feature at there. So a lot of stuff you can do. And we actually take up the whole thing. So if you want to change your meters, you can click on the meters and then, you know, it will change what you're looking at. If you want to change the 3DS display, basically anything you can touch on the screen, your mouse can touch too. Oh, nice. That's That sounds cool. Um, uh, so, uh, Sean, did you have any other questions from anybody? There were there? a couple of questions, but John, I had a quick question for you. I noticed sure. that when you're talking about the mouse, you, you, you just mm -hmm. showed a mouse and mm -hmm. it was a wireless mouse. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I also noticed there was a little bit of confusion at the beginning about, can you use a wireless mouse or can you not? Because of maybe driver conflicts and you guys really don't support Correct. drivers. Correct. Um, <clears throat> have you found any, any mouse one particular to be re more reliable than the other? Uh, you know, the, the ones that we found out are, are usually the ones that are, are either no drivers required 
sure um which there are technically a few on there um they're they're usually like the cheaper ones no one kind of thinks about or yeah. ones that um are usually a multi a multi how do you say os platforms on there okay um and that's usually what it is um one hmm. customer told me and i'll re- i'll repeat this stressing that the customer told me this we didn't test this but he said basically any mouse that you can connect into your cell phone like if you have an android hmm. phone that kind of thing like that because you can't load obviously the drivers on there though that those mouse those m- I guess mice and if plural there would be ones that do work on the ftdx 10 and the ftdx 101 once again we haven't tested any of that sure, but sure. that's what we were told and and i know people have wireless mice out there yeah definitely and and i remember doing an episode myself where i'm like hey the m185 mouse oh, yep, works yep, great yep i do remember but, that yep but then like a hundred people were like it doesn't work and i f- think i figured out what it is is this is an older version of the mouse where it's completely plug and play where people are buying the new ones in their different chipsets or whatever oh. that require drivers like you say so yeah a good point there thanks um, and, and it's and it, real quick it's usually like like this one here i have this like i said i got it into like a hub with other computer stuff here so um it kind of i, I kind of have a little bit of a different thing on there but yeah usually if it's got like the multi-function buttons like this one can do the three different computers or something like that or whatever whatever yeah. that's that's when it starts to get in there when it starts to get really super feature rich right that's right. your issues you might be lucky with a basic mouse, a, a pair, or a, you know, more lucky with a basic mouse. Uh, Adam Corum actually asked a question, and and basically he's asking about what these firmware updates that 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 you are doing. Sometimes the the menu seem to disappear a little bit quick, and he's wondering if there's any future um, possibilities of maybe implementation of a maybe like a menu system where you could say, hey, don't let the menus disappear uh, for two or three seconds. Uh, as like for example, if you're hitting. Uh, if you're hitting it to go between modes, sideband and CW, uh, sometimes it just disappears pretty quick. Um, and I would I would actually further the question by saying, and instead of asking you, because you might not know the question, is there anybody we could ever send those suggestions to? Yeah, so uh, on the FTDX10 especially, there has there has been that suggestion that has come into play, um, or have been, I should say, submitted numerous times on there. If you have suggestions or comments, that kind of thing like that, um, send them up through our contact us page at yezu.com. So if you go to yezu.com, you'll see on the header on the top, it will say contact us. There's going to be a menu system, like it's going to go to like a page, and then you'll at, we'll ask for your name, we ask for an email address, a telephone number, and some basic information on there. You'll ask and you just select a general question, I believe it is on there, and then in the box, type in your question on there and you'll have to do a CAPTCHA thing. Now, here's, I will tell you this, make sure your information is filled out. We we don't require the information, we don't sell your information, but we've had people that have put in there like, you know, they made a suggestion that's like, you know, from Betty Boop or Donald Duck or something like that, and you're just like, okay, no offense, I mean, how are we supposed to take that? Is that someone really seriously or something like that on there? Or is someone just trying to joke around or something like that on there? But enter sure. your information in there. And then what will happen is, is it does get forwarded to Japan um, and the engineers there. We do we do forward along. You may not get a response back saying, okay, we received in that kind of thing like that. You may not. Um, and the reason being is, is that on an average, in a given business week, Monday through Friday, we'll probably receive 20 to 25 suggestions um some are once again very valid you know people hey can you think about doing this for the next radio some are very demanding um which i'll just leave it at that um and then some are you know kind of like a common thought of like hey we would like to see this on there can you do that some of the things we can incorporate into current production radios some of the things we cannot because once again hardware or software or firmware limitations good example dr dr one x dr two x repeaters a lot of things that people wanted in the DR2X was common suggestions people sent in for the DR1X, but we couldn't implement it for a variety of reasons. So send it in there. Just because you don't get a reply from us does not mean that we didn't receive it. Just understand we get a lot. And then sometimes we have to, we, we look at it, we review it. And if we don't like it, it's not like we throw it away. But we the information we want is because we want to maybe, if there might be a case, we may ask you for further clarification if we can't understand it. So we do take suggestions. Excellent. Okay. So we're, we're coming to the end of the thing. And John, uh, can you just kind of tell people where they can get a hold of you? And uh, if, if, if I, I put your uh, Yesu USA in the, in my um, section in my, on my video there, but if there's more you, that you need to send me, you can just send it to me and I can add it in later. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah. So we have a couple different ways to reach us. Um, if you ever do, uh, the best way I always say is uh, to reach us through our contact us page at yezu.com. Uh, the reason being is because if I'm out on vacation or something like that, uh, we do have different categories. We have like sales support, general questions, technical support, customer support. You can check on the status of a repair um, from there too. So you can, you can send up a request through there. That's the best way to do it. Uh, if you want to, uh, you can reach out to me, j.crook at yezu.com. Once again, j period crook, K-R-U-K, at yezu.com. Um, I am a very busy person. So if it's sometimes a question or something that I may not be able to get to right away, if I don't get back to you a few a few days or something, it's it's nothing personal or anything like that whatsoever. It's just I'm really busy. Um, otherwise, you know, some of the things we have, we are on social media, Facebook. We do have our own YouTube channel, Yezu USA Official. So once again, Yezu USA Official on YouTube. We do um, educational videos uh, there. We do some answers, some questions, give updates. When we have updates on there, we post those videos on there. As again, social media on Facebook, uh, for an example. And then I we gotta, also do. I'm sorry, John. I got to cut you short because we got to go. Okay. But uh, okay. just give me whatever you got, and I'll throw it in my thing there. Uh, I want to thank yeah. everybody for being here. I want to thank you, John, for for joining us. It, it was a great deal. It went really fast. And uh, uh, check out Ham Radio, dude, my, and myself, KK Six USY Ham Radio Adventures. And now mm -hmm. stick stand by, and we're going to have uh, Ham Radio Crash Course is up next. And uh, if you didn't get it. Uh, if you look at the list up above, there's a uh, another playlist up there if you need to click onto it. Thanks, everybody. Uh, really uh, appreciate everybody showing up today. It was a great deal. And thank you again, John. You did an awesome job there. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right.